Janetta Williams, president of the NAACP Salt Lake City branch. Yes. Thank you so much for being part of Three Questions today. Thank you. In, in his final speech to the nation, President Barack Obama said that America is in a better place now than it was before he took office. Do you agree with that, and if so, why? Well, in part, I do agree with him, uh, especially when we talk about jobs and talk about even race relations in our country. You know, we, people have uh, wanted to come out and talk more about race uh, because President Obama being the first black president. But then a lot of things have been, you know, probably not as good because of the different hate groups that have come out after he was elected. Why do you suppose those groups have come out? And, and oh, let me ask it this way. The fact that hate groups have come out during his presidency, do you see that as a... Uh, a result of him being the first black president or is there something else going on in society that would lead them to come out even more than they were before? I think it would probably be both. Uh, one of the reasons is because he was elected and black president and the folks uh, of the other areas didn't like it and so they wanted to come out and voice their opposition to the first black president being uh, you know not uh, one of the people that they would have wanted to see as, as president, as their president. And I think that's why you saw so many different hate groups coming out uh, with uh, under President-elect Trump. Uh, and it's unfortunate because even here in the state of Utah, we do have uh, different uh, hate groups that are here as well and that are supporters of the Confederate flag. Many Utahns would like to believe that racism is not an issue here, yes. but I think that idea, and you would probably agree, is a little naive. How does racism manifest itself here in Utah? I think uh, in Utah, it's different things that come up, and people will see it. We'll even, through the NAACP phone number, we'll get anonymous calls. Sometimes, you know, we're able to track them and be able to call back, maybe in some instances, and talk to them and are, say... Are they threatening calls? They, they are threatening, and then they're, you know, saying what, you know, what they would do. Uh, some, uh, one we had before when uh, another person had a hangman's uh, character, uh, last Halloween uh, of President Obama. So that one we reported to the FBI and the FBI did act upon it and make sure that uh, he took that down. So there's different uh, things that uh, people think that it's okay that uh, because of the low number of African Americans or minorities in the state of Utah that they can do certain things and just get away with it. But that keeps the NAACP really busy. So we, ha we have a lot of things going on, but not only here in Utah that these things happen, but I've, I'm working now on a couple of things in Idaho and in uh, Nevada. Because you help guide those areas as exactly. well. Exactly. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. The NAACP keeps track of civil rights complaints. Over the last eight years, here in Utah, have, uh, what has that trend been? Has it gone up? Has it gone down? Has it stayed flat? Where are we? Well, here in Utah, surprisingly, it's been about the same. It's been almost just leveled off. We haven't received a lot. We, we do receive complaints, of course, different things going on, and uh, and, and we have act upon on those. Uh, one of the things here in the state of Utah, people are kind of are surprised because we'll get complaints from not only African Americans, but we'll have complaints from Caucasian, we'll get complaints from Hispanic, and because they feel very comfortable in contacting the NAACP saying, these things are happening either to me or to someone that I know. And so we've been having to uh, act upon some of those issues as well. I would imagine that the NAACP's plate is growing larger and larger and larger with more and more groups that are kind of falling into that category of folks that are being discriminated against or having civil rights uh, complaints. It, it is. We have a large number of issues going on, and especially even after the election we had to make contact with a lot of the school districts uh, asking, you know, what are you doing to make sure that 
the children are being protected, that the parents know what's going on because uh, other children were harassing, especially the Hispanic or maybe some of the immigrants, uh, saying that now it's time, you, you got to go back home. We're going to miss you or just being very uh, negative on students. And so the NAACP, you know, stepped up to the administrators and said, you know, you need to make sure you get control of this or we'll have to make some other uh, take some other actions. With Donald Trump ascending to the presidency now, uh, where do you think race relations will go in the United States with him in the Oval Office? Well, to be honest with you, I think race relations is going to be terrible. I really think that we're going to be seeing much more and many more of the different hate groups coming up and exposing themselves because they feel that it's comfortable and they can do it because they feel that uh, President-elect Trump will condone what they're doing uh, and the hatred. Uh, so we, we're seeing and we're gearing up that it's going to be a lot more of the different hate groups popping up and it may be even just individuals popping up. And so we're just uh, getting ready for them and making sure that, that we can address all those issues. And that's one of the reasons why we need to make sure that we have a very strong Department of Justice. And I, I'm not sure how that's going to go because uh, Senator Sessions now uh, has been, you know, one of the people that has been, you know, never voted in favor of some of the hate crimes laws, uh, the Matthew Shepard law, he voted against it. He voted against some of the voting rights issues. And so we're, we're in for a rocky road. Uh, I'm going to ask you this question cleanly so that we can include him in one of those questions. Yes. So uh, Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions could very well become the next uh, Attorney General of the United States. Some of his critics have been very vocal about his civil rights record. Where do you stand on it? I stand uh, in support of our president and CEO, Carnell William Brooks, who testified uh, against the confirmation of Senator Sessions. And that is, you know, we, we don't want to have him in as the attorney general, but, you know, we know that, you know, with the votes and the... Uh, Republican-led Congress that he'll probably be confirmed, but uh, we're just going to have to be there and, and fight. And we don't want to go back to the early 60s when we're fighting for voting rights and we're doing all the marches and things like that. So, But we're just going to have to gear up for uh, what we think is going to be a fight. And, you know, we're hoping that that he does some of the things what he had said before about, you know, when he was... Uh, Confirm, was going to be confirmed to be a judge that they some of those things were taken out of contact so you know we'll see what happens what concerns you most about senator jeff sessions as attorney general of the united states i think what troubles me is some of the voting rights act some of the things that's going to come up uh, another thing is that if there's different issues coming up where we're having to, we mean the naacp uh, having to having to report things to the Department of Justice that nothing happens and it just goes um, unnoticed or not do anything about it at all. So that's one of the concerns is that we don't want him to be a um, person that's going to be in opposition of the civil rights and the things that we've accomplished and the things that we see happening across the country. And we want to make sure that uh, different folks are kept in place that we worked with uh, in, the, in the past with the Department of Justice. Let's switch gears here just for a moment. Do people of color get a fair shake economically here in Utah? I, I'd have to say no. Uh, some people probably say no, that you're not, that's not correct, Janetta, but we do know that there have been in a lot of instances, and we get complaints on these, where we've had people uh, of color and African Americans in particular uh, have had, uh, say, for instance, master's, master's degree uh, versus a white uh, person with a, a bachelor's degree, uh, and both are very well qualified. The minority person overqualified than the white person, but the white individual end up getting the job.
Mm. So we've seen that. That hurts people when they're looking at trying to up, have upward mobility in buying a home, in uh, living out the American dream, where they can't get jobs that they know they're qualified. Because we tell people all the time, you know, go to school, go to college, get an education, you know, do all of those type of things. And that's why the NAACP, we're always out uh, making sure that we give scholarships. And at our luncheon, on uh, Martin Luther King luncheon, we have 18 scholarships, and this is the largest one. We started out doing one, and that was the one that was always sponsored by the late Larry H. Miller. Mm. In his farewell speech, President Obama said that it's not enough just to change the laws. Hearts need to change. What does that mean to you? Well, that means to me is that, you know, people that, you know, maybe they haven't interacted with a person of color before. and Maybe they're wondering, uh, well, I don't know what to say and I don't know how to approach a person. Then just make sure that they have change of heart, that they approach a person just like if it was their significant other or their neighbor or somebody that they uh, interact with on a daily basis. Now make sure that they can interact with, with folks and make sure that they're sincere. And what they'll find out is that everybody is, you know, we're, we're all looking to have, you know, friendships and lasting relationships. Hmm. What does the term post-racial America mean to you? Uh, I guess I'd have to say, I guess, I'm kind of not, not sure on that question. Post-racial America, say, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, in terms of uh, Americans not noticing color mm -hmm. anymore, where race is not the very first thing that is considered. Mm -hmm. So if, if that's the definition of post-racial America, where the racial lines are erased or largely diminished. Mm -hmm. what, kind of an, uh, what kind of a country would you see America being? So in other words, what does post-racial America mean to you? Yeah, well, exactly. And, and that's why I had to kind of pause on that question to begin with, because to me, it's, you're going to be able to see, see color. You know, when I walk into a room, they're not just, people are not saying, oh, you know, there's Janetta. Some, yes, but then they'll say that African-American, she's, she's black or something like that. But uh, when people say they're colorblind, I, I, that's, not, uh, that's not a good. I don't like to see people that say, you know, they're colorblind. I know one time somebody wrote an article about me and they said, you know, I was colorblind. And I thought, I wish I'd known that they were going to write that because I would have said, don't say that, you know, because you do see color yeah. and it is good. You know, people need to know that, you know, they're walking in a room. Uh, it may be two or three people of color and it may be another Caucasian person and another Hispanic or uh, Pacific Islander or whatever it might be. But color matters and race matters. Why is that? Is it, is it a cultural preservation kind of thing? Why is it that race matters? I think because, you know, when people look at different issues or different things that, that, that come up, uh, they, they not only look at, you know, maybe a person's color and they're looking at, you know, the race, they're looking at, you know, what it is, they're kind of on an eggshell, don't know, you know, what to say or what not to say. And I, I just think if people need to feel a little bit more comfortable about talking about race and race relations. This is, uh, this is a personal question, but I know it applies to a lot of our viewers out there, well, a good number of our viewers. Mm -hmm. There are a number of white families in Utah who have adopted children of color of various races, exactly. many African Americans, some Oriental, some uh, or Asian, and some Pacific Islander and Hispanic. What would be your advice to those white families here in Utah who are of mixed race? What would be your advice to the parents raising those children. Okay, my advice, and there are a large number here in the state of Utah, and my advice would be to say, 
uh, get your children involved in some of the things, the activities uh, with, uh, say for instance, the NAACP. Uh, have them take out a membership to the NAACP. Get a copy of the Crisis Magazine that comes from our national uh, every two weeks. Uh, know and interact uh, on some of the local events that are happening here in our state, uh, just to get involved to let the children see that there are African Americans here in the state of Utah because if they are only uh, interacting with say for instance it's a white family that's adopted and they're only interacting with the white part of the family, then uh, it's kind of does a disservice to the children because they're trying to figure out where is it that they really belong? Yeah, where, uh, they so, so, where do they fit in? And so I think to me, uh, if it was me, I would uh, have them interact a little bit more with uh, activities uh, that are going on in the community, have them interact and surely, like I said, they could take out a membership. They can, when they see the Crisis Magazine, they can look through the pages, there's pictures, there's stories, there's, if they're too young to know, that at least the parents can kind of read to them and kind of explain to them. Uh, another thing would be with the Dr. King holiday coming up and as we give recognition to Mrs. Rosa Parks, uh, kind of explain to them that America hasn't always been like this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people take for granted. And that's one of the things that, reason why we fight so much to try to make sure that we get people registered to vote and then they don't even go vote. I think that is a disgrace and a slap in the face on the people that lost their lives, gave, it up, gave up their life doing the marches, doing the fighting for civil rights, that people don't take the time to go and vote. As you can probably tell, that's one of my passions because I have just been in this fight for so long and it's a fight that, that I believe in and we just need to let our young people know that uh, things have changed a lot things have changed and that uh, they're living in a society where they can go to uh, McDonald's or Burger King or to a restaurant and go in the front door without having to go in the back door like, like we had to do and, and go make sure that they can interact and play with the little white friends and their little black friends because when I was coming up we had little white friends during the weekends, but then on Monday morning, we all went to separate schools, mm. different schools, segregated mm. schools. Uh, so those things happen. I think it's very important to, know, to let our little young people know that um, it's okay, uh, you know, to talk about race. And it's okay when people know that your skin is different color skin than theirs. Mm. But, but tell them that that's okay because we're all unique. And we all have a place in this world and let them know that, you know, there's a lot that in my history that I'm proud of. And let me just tell you a little bit about some of the, you know, Dr. King and the Rosa Parks, the Fannie Lou Hamer and all of those folks that the Julian Bunn, who was a good friend of mine. Let me tell you a little bit about some of those folks and what they did and what they accomplished. As we wrap up, let's circle back to uh, President Obama. What do you believe will be President Barack Obama's hallmark for the years that he was in office? There's a, a lot, I think, that I would want people to, to look at him. I think one of his, and I think a lot of people would agree with me, whether they support him or not, would be uh, his ability to uh, deliver such a, a, a great speech all the time, every time that he delivered a speech. Another thing was about his passion for society as a whole. Uh, another one I think would be, how Mark would be, uh, how he really cared for the country. And, and you could tell by his voice, you could tell in the different things. Uh, you can tell like when he went to the uh, service at the uh, church in South Carolina after nine individuals were shot and killed, how he sang Amazing Grace. Uh, how he was able to deliver a speech and show emotion and of course sometimes shed a tear. Uh, so th those are I think some of the hallmarks that people will remember him by, uh, not only for his, his work but also for his passion. Mm -hmm. Janetta Williams, president of the NAACP Salt Lake City branch. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being part of Three Questions. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay.